are these uh, light red badges. So if you need anything during the day, you can find one of the people wearing this badge and they should be able to, to help you. Um, yes. So, of course, we would not be able to um, help this event on our own. So we had a lot of support from other, uh, our colleagues and uh, a lot of people and a lot of institutions and organizations. So at this point I would very much like to thank all the people who have been involved in the preparations of this event. Um, and thank you all, of course, that you are here today. So, uh, the institutions that I would like to help, help thank, uh, who helped to make this happen, is of course Charles University in Prague. Uh, so we are very happy that you can be here uh, in, in the premises that Charles University has. It's Charles University Environment Center, that's the, that's the research center, the interdisciplinary research center where I work and where my colleagues work. Of course, we would like to thank very much the Copernicus Alliance. This is a Copernicus Alliance conference, and our center is a member of this alliance. So of course, without them, this would not be possible to happen. And we'll hear uh, later on from the president, Daniel Tilbury, more about the alliance today. Uh, another initiative we'd like to acknowledge is the Rio Plus 20 Treaty on Higher Education, which is an initiative of the Copernicus Alliance. I think Daniel might mention that a little bit later on. We'd also like to acknowledge the UB4SD project, the University of Educators for Sustainable Development, which is again a project very tightly linked to Copernicus Alliance and funded for the Life and Learning Program of the European Commission. And in addition, uh, some local organizations that go to be involved. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Society for Sustainable Living, it's a local NGO helping along uh, to organize this event. And then we have two uh, funding agencies, the Czech funding agencies, the Technology Agency, the Czech Republic, and Czech Science. Foundation, which partly comes from the agreement. So these are the institutions that we'd like to help. We very much appreciate the support. Um, and of course, there are a lot of people who'd like to thank all our speakers, uh, all our facilitators, and everyone involved today. So thank you very much again for helping us. And at this moment, I would like to welcome uh, our vice director, Professor Jan van Balinka, to say a few words. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my deep pleasure on behalf of uh, His Magnificence, uh, Professor Tabar Zima, to invite you here in the premises of Charles University in Prague. Uh, we are always very proud to, to mention that uh, we are the oldest university north of Alps, east from Rhine, which is our work in Central Europe. Uh, we would also like to think that it's one of the best universities in this, in this region. Uh, it has approximately 50,000 students and 17 faculties, including five faculties of medicine and three faculties of theology. So you might imagine that it's quite some, uh, quite some task to try to run such an institution. We are trying to be well, of course. If I may allow, uh, be allowed to say a uh, personal word, I studied Faculty of Natural, Faculty of Natural Sciences in the 80s. And, uh, we were trying to demonstrate against the communist government policies by that time. And we have been hunted on the streets and in the forests when we protest some environment issues that used to be that were really uh, difficult for us to cope with. Now the world changed and uh, we are not hunted by police anymore, mostly. Uh, however, it's still sometimes difficult to convey to the politicians uh, the views on the environment that we believe are the right ones. And therefore, I really like the subtitle of your conference, Education and Sustainability, because we really do need to introduce the environment issue, not only to the curriculum of the universities, but to our, to our life and to our consciousness, so that uh, we are on, uh, no more hunted on the streets and in the forests when we want to say that 2 plus 2 equals 4. And I think it's very important. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this conference will help us to go at least a step in this, uh, in this direction. And I do wish you very pleasant.
Sam Stave Dark and very productive and interesting conference. For the ballroom, Felix, for Toronto Square, and welcome to Brown. It's a baby in terms of sustainable development and the education sector. So 
very keen for us to explore with great substance some of the thematic issues that underpin this agenda. First, before I get into talking about uh, education for sustainable development, I'm keen to introduce to colleagues who are new to Copernicus Science a little bit about this important European network, which has a long history in terms of collaboration, dating back to the Copernicus Charter, of course, which was a significant impact uh, across Europe and in raising the profile of universities and the attainment of sustainable development. Since then, in 2002, there has been a recognition of the flame, the burning flame of passion and engagement of universities across Europe through the Rio of the 20 Treaty. It was a process that was led by the Copernicus Alliance in collaboration with the United Nations University and the International Association of Universities. It was a dialectic process where key players across the globe were engaged in identifying key principles for change in university. <coughs> the treaty comes with over 100 signatures now and is a key reference document for <coughs> leadership teams across universities who are keen not just to add a little bit here and there or support colleagues on the fringes of university that are committed to a transformational change in higher education. These are just some of the principles that underpin the treaty. I do encourage you to follow uh, the activities associated with the treaty, which identify some short-term and medium-term targets that we are fulfilling. Our immediate target is to engage the network in practical activities engaged with the reorientation of the curriculum. And our UE for project achieves just that. I will talk about university later in my presentation. So in terms of the substance, if we stand for a second and just look at the higher education landscape, there are three key things to note. It is a very good time to be engaging with higher education and sustainable development issues. An excellent time. There couldn't be a much better opening into this agenda at the moment. There is clarity or greater clarity than there has been before in terms of the global vision for sustainable development. The sustainable development goals being released only last week. With the UN agendas and the international collaboration being more significant with regards to sustainable development. And the pathways with which we need to engage the higher education sector to contribute to changing our world for a more positive future being calmed as we speak. It is no longer a theme that's debated in the academic classes or a definitional exercise about what sustainable development is or isn't. We are now at that next step where it's time to engage with changes. It's the action section of our timeline of change. And universities are walking the talk. We see multiple universities engaging in sustainable development. The motivations for engaging are very different. Some universities are engaging because they're attracted to the challenge that sustainable development brings to them. It's a real world issue. How are universities responding? Others, because they think it's the right thing to do. It's ethical, it's responsible for universities to be embracing this agenda that is dividing the world in terms of poverty, in terms of climate change and the responses to it. Universities cannot be kept out of that dialogue. They need to be there. They need to be engaging. <coughs> and others are, are really involved with sustainable development because they see it as a unique selling point. There's something which can be used to distinguish their universities from all the other thousands of universities that are competing for a space and are competing for students. Whatever the reason, we are now in a stage where universities can no longer ignore and increasingly there was a realisation that education and the curriculum side of this work is where universities can make the greatest impact. But we are not alone in terms of changes. 
a UNESCO study commissioned for the end of decade monitoring and evaluation report that will be launched in Nagoya in this coming November, identified four key areas of action that have been monitored, that have been seeing changes across the globe. The first one was a dramatic increase in the number of leadership teams, vice chancellors, rectors, vice rectors that are engaged in this agenda. And I want to say a little bit more about that in a minute. There's also an increasing number of universities that are modeling across their campuses, across their supply chains, sustainable development. Thirdly, there are those that are engaging with their communities, their NGOs, those power groups in our society to build more constructive change, locally and regionally. And finally, this agenda of the education, the most powerful tool that universities have, which is to change the way our graduates work, the way they behave, the way they engage, the way they take on responsibility over I have to say a few words on each of these key areas. We are witnessing changes in higher education. But higher education teams, the leadership teams, play a very vital role in bringing about those changes. And although there is a long series of steps to be closer to sustainable development, the first couple of steps have been taken by leadership teams that are appointing vice rectors who have responsibility for sustainable development and sustainability in the institution. The study that UNESCO commissioned had a, a significant increase in the number of portfolio responsibilities in that level. There's also an increasing number of universities that are signing charters, of course, and declarations, making explicit commitments. And although that's the first step, there's a lot more that needs to happen. We certainly see governing bodies that are responsible for the university, the governing of the university, to which rectors and presidents will report to, having a remit, an agreement, or a person responsible specifically for asking the sustainability questions. This has certainly been an increase in the last 12 months. It seems to be an important trend. The governance structures of sustainability in universities are also changing, with committees that are bringing together representation right across the university, having a full role in reporting structures across uh, and focus on sustainability. These are some of the tools that are helping leadership teams understand whether all this busyness, all this activity, is actually heading the university in a much more sustainable pathway. Because it's one thing to talk about the importance of it, it's another thing to rearrange our government's chairs. But the key thing is, are we making progress? And there are tools that can help leadership teams understand where as a university you are and where you could be in regards to this agenda. The second set of changes we're experiencing are very much tied to the idea of um, the campus and the management of the campus and the catering, the food that's served on campus, the recycling on campus, the planting of trees, of course, but also the procurement, when we buy our lecterns, when we buy our microphones, when we buy our computers, when we dispose of our computers when they come to the end of life. Are we thinking about sustainability? Are we purchasing for long term? Are we purchasing for fair trade? Are we purchasing locally to support local businesses? This is all part of this agenda. And you will see that all the way from Harvard to our University of Worcestershire, which are very distant, not just geographically, but in terms of our business, we are embedding into our procurement and sustainability chain of purchase considerations about sustainability. We are training our finance managers to think about sustainability when approving travel, when approving purchase. This is all part of the major changes that we're seeing. Australia has had a very significant impact on this agenda too. I mean, some of the Australian, Australian universities are leading very much in the campus development and the change agenda in the sector. The third series of changes are seen in terms of outreach. So the crumbling of the walls of the Ivory Tower, 
with still playing an important part in terms of generating knowledge and supporting uh, the key thinking in our, in our countries and globe. But there's a division that's crumbling. Those up walls of the campuses are crumbling down as that collaboration and partnership between the academic and academia and our outreach, our partnership groups are beginning to strengthen in the area of sustainable development. This is a market trend and perhaps much more logical in terms of partnerships with businesses, the partnerships with NGOs in addressing this agenda. These are just some examples where universities might be leading change in our communities but also supporting and following change led by our community. <laughs> example of the Earth Hour, which I have the privilege of setting up with our colleagues in Australia. It's a, it's a fine example where universities are following an NGO in supporting awareness raising and change and action associated with climate change. But the really interesting changes, the ones that really are appealing to many academics, is the shift that we're seeing in the type of research activity that is taking place. Now don't get me wrong, this is not mainstream, this is not common practice. But what we're starting to see is a questioning of the type of paradigms that have underpinned our research practice. And this is terribly exciting. We are stopping the idea of doing research on people and doing research with people. We're stopping the idea of treating people as objects of research or subjects of research and more of collaborators. And that redefines the type of research questions we ask. It redefines the type of knowledge generation that takes place. It tends to be more applied, tends to be more relevant. So these trends are really interesting ones to watch, and although the impact of these haven't been visible yet, the, the beginning of the stems of this work is going to be something to watch in the next five to ten years, as this might be a radical change that we're looking for in university. And finally, this key agenda that's so important to us, because if you stand back, the major impact that any university can, can have in our society is through the graduates, through the postgraduates and undergraduates that they educate. That is the most powerful force. 20% of our leadership worldwide are, are postgraduates with MBAs, with masters, with doctorates. And 82% of politicians, of CEOs of business, of NGOs, are university graduates. So the power of shaping thinking, the power of influencing thinking in universities is tremendously significant in playing a leadership role. And that happens to our education. And these are just some examples of the changes that can be seen in the education side of work. In the quality assurance of education, we need to watch that space. From Belgium to the UK to Uganda, there are questions being asked about how we ensure quality of universities and courses, and how sustainable development is an important part. There's some interesting initiatives such as this one which I'm planning about the guide to the ESD and quality that raises some questions and some exemplary practices of gender. But all this optimism needs to be contextualised. And I think this quote really does help us understand what is happening in our world. You cannot put a lettuce in the window of a butcher shop and declare you turn you vegetarian. The reality is that all of this work is happening very much on the fringes of the university still. And until these leadership teams embrace it up the core and the green banter, the green discourse that has been adopted to the university start and change the thinking and decisions, then it's only a marketing campaign. And so we really do need to get to the hub of this. And I have to say that the UNESCO work that we did shows some significant progress, significant progress on the campus and leadership side, and certainly the outreach. Significant. Out in the last 10 years, we've seen an increasing amount of variability in that area. But the education curriculum, there's practically very small changes taking place in 
action. And this is why we really need to look at the education. And we need to look at the unsustainability things that we are teaching. It's so not just adding good things, but standing back and looking about what it is about our universities that are not good, that are contributing to a world that is unsustainable. Because we are part of the problem as well as part of the solution in our society. And we need to question deeply what it is we're doing that is generating or reproducing a lot of the social ills of this world, as well as contributing to good practice. So we have that sort of two-sided coin that we need to address. Now, to address some of these challenges, Copernicus Alliance has been partnering with 52, I think it is, you see, we've just changed the number, I think it's 52, between 52 and 55 partners in 33 countries across Europe. And our colleagues from these countries met yesterday here in Prague to look at the opportunities that support professional development of university educators. Because we see the key change in universities to be those who teach our students, those who do the education, and they need professional support, and they need enhancement, and they need opportunities to change their curriculum to create good, <coughs> substantial changes in universities. And that's where we we'll work. This is just a sample, uh, a map indicating where our partners are. We are very excited about what can emerge from this particular project. And I thank our partners for joining us today, because this will be a significant piece of work in taking this agenda forward. The focus of this work is university education. Just to give you a hint of the sort of things that can emerge. You will learn a lot more today. There will be opportunities to find out more about the first deliverable of this project, which is a state-of-the-art report on professional development opportunities in education for sustainable development, which is being launched in this conference. But let me get to the bottom of this. We should congratulate ourselves for the, how far we've come, particularly in the last five to seven years. That's what the research is telling us. We've come a long way. But we need to really appreciate what David Orr said. Those who are the most educated in our world are the ones who are most exploiting people on the planet. It is not the ignorant poor or those who have the least opportunities in our world to make a difference. It's those who are networked, those who are connected, those who have the power of change. They are the ones that we need to reach through in our in our, in our journey to bring about change for sustainability in higher education. So as I say, it's not enough to build a new course in education for sustainable development. It's not enough to plant a new tree in our campuses. It's not enough just to change our government structure. We need to get to the bottom of what is wrong with our universities, as well as what good it can generate. And that's much harder to do. And so I end with this slide to say, Great, we've come this far, and we know the next steps that we can take as universities are going forward. We can see them. They're examples of great practice, and we can see those next steps along the journey. And there is a little gap there in terms of the transformation of our education, where we need a bit of a miracle for this to happen quickly. But I am a great believer in it. So I'm a great believer in working closely with people to be able to close that gap or add a few more steps that help us connect our big ambition of change with our day-to-day -day practice. Thank you for being part of this journey.